they provided them with a children's devotional book as a church, just as a way to encourage them. And they figured, hey, then the next time they're there or visiting with them, they can ask them about how that's going. And then, you know, of course, the whole idea of using online resources, especially with that younger generation. So those are just some of the tasks that we came up with as we went through there. So just to kind of give you an idea of some ways that, you know, you can use this information that you get in the results to develop a strategic action plan that can help you as a church. Yeah, that's a really helpful look there, Rick. And Raj, Rick has laid out an example of a particular church and how it looked for them. I wonder if you could speak to those on the call today and say, what would anticipated outcomes look like from this plan for the churches on the call today? Oh, yeah, we've, we've studied our churches, looked at them, and uh, one of <clears throat> the outcomes that we find that happens is, is uh, that every area, every area, every aspect of church, church life becomes part of the process. I mean, leadership gets involved, uh, church school uh, gets impacted and involved and engaged, adult education, small groups, worship, uh, you, you name it. Now, you, you can see at this point that you, your church needs to do more than just take a survey, obviously, and uh, more than just take those results and release them to your congregation. The survey results really need to be analyzed and shaped into an action plan. But to implement such a plan requires the involvement all, of all the major ministries of your church. As Rick showed in his uh, sample of the strategic action plan uh, worksheet that we use, that there is that question, who's responsible? Who's going to do it? So we need to, what we need to do is not just do a survey. But we need to take the plan that comes out of that survey and build it into the life of your congregation. 